Often when we talk about innovation, then uh, we tend to uh, end up uh, focusing on uh, high-tech industries. And it's a little bit amazing because a lot of the economic activity uh, activities in society would actually take place in traditional industries. And uh, these industries, they are actually also very active in terms of uh, innovation. It's just like they end up a, a little bit below the radar. As a result, then we, we don't know a lot about how these innovations, they are managed and how the firms, they create value from them and uh, so on from an academic perspective. And it also looks like um, uh, firms engaging in uh, innovation in traditional industries, they even they have some exciting uh, innovations, they tend to get a little bit too little value out of the activity. When we look at the uh, uh, innovation in uh, the traditional sector, then it, uh, it differs from uh, high-tech innovation on a number of uh, dimensions. And this is not to say that uh, innovation in traditional sectors is necessarily low-tech. It can still be a pretty advanced uh, technologies. But we in general see that uh, it differs in terms of uh, the knowledge base and uh, how you access uh, uh, knowledge and uh, how you might create value from it and um, what type of uncertainty is uh, associated with the activity. If you just look a little bit closer into the knowledge base, then uh, we would often see that uh, um, traditional industries, they have fewer people involved uh, in the innovation, so an, a less formalized research and development activity and would often uh, rely more on a trial and error uh, uh, learning processes. Um, however, uh, we uh, increasingly see that uh, um, firms in this sector also start relating to, for example, university research and uh, rely on uh, university research de delivering uh, knowledge and options. And one example on that is, for example, Comvita and uh, uh, their use of uh, Manuka honey for, for different purposes, which wouldn't have been possible without having a, a strong uh, science base to, to back it up. Another aspect of uh, uh, innovation in uh, traditional industries is that we often see that they rely a lot on uh, technology suppliers to drive the uh, innovation. And uh, when we look at uh, the uh, uh, situation in New Zealand, we uh, might have ended up uh, in a corner where we have a relatively weak technology sector uh, supplying uh, these industries, which uh, somehow impacts their ability to innovate, but also um, um, reduce our uh, opportunity for creating uh, exciting new products and services we could bring to a, a, a global market. And uh, one uh, example on that is, for example, the uh, um, forestry in industry in Finland, where besides having a, a strong forestry industry, it has traditionally uh, and over a long period of time built up a, a very strong network of supplier uh, companies developing machinery and tools to the forestry industry, machinery and tools to the paper industry, and, and so forth. And uh, not only supplying local industry, but supplying uh, these uh, technologies on a global scale. And we could imagine that uh, we in a similar situation in New Zealand, if we got a stronger technology base uh, uh, or base of firms delivering technologies to our core and maybe primary industries, that we would uh, see that uh, uh, they would be able to develop um, uh, products and services which would have a relevance uh, um, uh, abroad in, uh, in many markets. It's, uh, uh, it's interesting to see that uh, innovation in high-tech industries would often be associated with a high level of uncertainty. And we often talk about that only one out of 10 of these high-tech companies, they manage to, uh, to survive. Uh, and out of those who survive, only a smaller fraction might end up uh, staying put in New Zealand and grow their organization here. Um, instead, they would go abroad and uh, uh, other to follow their markets or the capital and so on. If we look at innovation in traditional industries, it's often stimulating uh, organic growth. Right? It might be a little bit slower growth, but it's also a more certain growth um, because these companies they uh, know their markets and markets and know their customers, know their technology base, and so forth. So um, instead of having the uh, the high failure rate, uh, we see that um, it's a more kind of stable and predictable uh, uh, growth rate. And uh, an additional advantage is that they will often stay put in New Zealand. So uh, we would see that this kind of innovation activity would uh, translate into uh, uh, manufacturing jobs and, uh, and jobs uh, in, the, uh, in the local uh, economy. 
an argument we we often hear about the the, the lack of uh, a technology base or base of uh, technology firms in New Zealand is this about distance and a smaller market um, but um, uh, will my Danish background uh, where we have a similar a small market uh, um, a population around the five million and um, um, uh, a similar or earlier similar industry structure with a lot of reliance on, on the primary industry. I think uh, uh, it's important to notice that um, uh, firms, they often don't need size of market in the, in the beginning. What they need is access to customers with interesting needs uh, and a willingness to collaborate around uh, developing uh, new technologies that serve those needs. Um, and when uh, first uh, uh, you have developed a, a solution that can serve those needs, it's relatively easy to scale up and uh, um, uh, and start exporting uh, to other markets. And again, um, yeah, uh, coming from a, a small country like like Denmark, where we also rely on uh, a lot of uh, on export, you can say distance uh, really matters, but. You will also see that uh, most of the export from uh, countries like uh, in Scandinavia would go to North America and uh, Asia, and the distance to those markets uh, are more or less the same from Scandinavia uh, than from New Zealand. So I'm not sure that distance is such a, a, a significant issue uh, any longer. So this area of uh, uh, innovation in traditional industries um, has been... Um, uh, a core part of the Center of Innovation and Entrepreneurship in the, uh, in the business school for the last uh, a year or so. And uh, we have established a, a project uh, looking into, into this. Um, and uh, over the last half a year, uh, increasingly um, been interacting with industry and other uh, key stakeholders um, uh, involved in, uh, in traditional industries. And um, um, we uh, really hope that uh, a lot of people would and firms would get involved in this work. And um, if anybody would like to, um, to contribute or hear more about the project, they're very welcome to contact me or the center.